Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to continue our analysis on BTI, British American Tobacco, and we're going to focus mainly on the charting aspect of things. Um, in our last video, we determined our projections for the company, and this is the evaluation that we came up with. If you haven't seen that video or the previous videos before that, make sure you go check those out so you're up to date. I'll post those cards up here in the top right to make it easy on you guys, or you can simply go to my channel and go look at the previous videos. But nonetheless, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in BTI, uh, not even in my index funds. I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose, simply stating my opinion in this analysis. <clears throat> so moving over to the chart. I have a clean chart right here. I'm actually gonna get rid of this. There we go. As clean a chart as it possibly gets. Uh, I am on a weak chart. Every candle represents a day. I can see they IPO'd in 1977 it had an initial run off the off the start right here now I do want to talk about this drop now in recent charting videos I have uh, used the fib tool from top to move bottom move to mark out extension points um, I, I should have made clear that <clears throat> with these types of drops right here I'm looking for wave structures so look at how we gap down pretty much all the way down underneath the dollar you see how we have this large gap down? There's not any any correlating stuff inside of that that would make me want to put a fib tool from top to move bottom move besides the large fall. And this is another good example right here. Just this large, see how it's just a straight down drop and it happened in the course of one week, one trading week. But this drop right here, you can see we actually are getting some wave structures. You have a, you have an initial fall, you retrace, you try to hold that, that support cracks, you have a retest. And then at the end of this wave structure, you attempt to set this double bottom and then it goes on a run. So there's a difference in doing that, but for the sake of the video, I already know because I've already looked at it. And I, I had called it out originally from the beginning. <clears throat> but you are getting some action off your first extension right here. You fight to get over, over top of that price, but ultimately you got this gap filled. Now, if I were to mark that gap, it actually does have a direct wick go through it on a week. <clears throat> Very interesting. I love I love looking at the gap fills and how it transpires and how it plays into the supply and demand. But nonetheless, uh, if I pull this across over here, you can see that, I mean, we're getting rejected off our first extension. You get on top of it for a little bit. You push up to your second extension multiple times right here. And ultimately, it continues to run bullish past it. It is getting some good traction, but in terms of a full extension, it's very tough to say because I, I don't know what corresponded on this day for a huge gap down like this. Obviously, we are getting some uh, some action based off of it, but it's not a five-wave structure, and I'm not surprised that it keeps running bullish off of this. You got a nice trend line that's built. It, there was some initial sell-off off of it. But it's it's tough to say when you're in terms of looking at full extensions, and it, I already know with this one as well. And both of these kind of have similar extensions, and both of them do get a little price action off the full extension. Uh, double top sets in right here. That's definitely a, a a bull or a bear trap because the bears are expecting a sell off right here, but the, it just never comes. Supply and demand. People keep buying it up. But it just so happens on the one structure we actually have some nice fall right here just a nice drop we actually do get some nice action off this I'm gonna show you guys <clears throat> that we do get this nice double top come in right here we put a double top at our previous all-time high we fight at our first extension second extension third extension we get our double top come in and we do get another five wave structure that comes in right here and this this there is a lot of good information to go over on this drop so we definitely will do that but uh, I think it's very interesting how you take a top of the move, bottom move, it marks out a full extension. If you were buying in right here, you get a break, the all-time high, and you're looking for a full extension, you got it. I mean, and there is definitely clear sell-off off of that. And every candle represents a week. This was from the bottom, a thousand or a thousand percent run. I mean, it's pretty impressive if if I were to say so. <clears throat> but nonetheless, let's get into some more of the technical analysis. I do like showing those examples right there. Uh, let's set our trend line in right here. I'm looking for as many points of contact as possible. And I feel that kind of represents itself. If I wanted to, I could go onto a day chart and really look at how this started because it'd be very hard to judge. Because in the, in this time period right here, we have no like, uh, we don't have three points of contact, so it's very hard to judge how this is going to pan out. So I'd want to actually go in and dive in closer to these points of contact right there and see if there is an original trend line. You know, we can actually go do that. 
Um, I'm not actually sure if there's going to be anything correlating in there, but it, it, it's tough to say off of that one. But our original one, I mean, you could say, you could say, okay, let's get this through all of these right here and adding with that one final wick right there before we start getting bullish. And then you get the higher low right here. You could say that's, that's decently set right there, but is it enough, uh, correlating evidence to say, oh yeah, I knew this was the exact way to set this so that we were going to get this. It would have been really tough to say, but now that we have these trading days where we can see the price action working with this trend line, I really like how this looks. And, you know, it doesn't quite reach it right there, but we come in direct contact right there, almost at a gap. So I can see this gap up right there. It attempts to get down there, but the trend line actually holds it up from getting down to that gap. So that's very interesting. That's how I'd probably set my long-term trend line for that. And looking at the current price, I mean, it, it, we might be meeting up with this trend line in the short term. So we will talk about that. Uh, but for this video, we're going to mainly focus on just the history of the chart, see what we can find. And uh, I might make another video where I focus more on the short term. So if uh, you were expecting me to talk more about this area right here, I might touch base with it a little bit, but that will be for the next charting video. So nonetheless, we do get our full extension here. We get a nice five wave structure. Now you could call this a double bottom. It doesn't really look like too much of an inverse head and shoulders, but if I were to take a retracement from here, I want to see how this, because now we're getting closer. This is the housing market crash right here. So, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was down. A lot of stuff had patterns like this, and it's easy for me to sit here and say, but we do actually get correlation. A double top come into my 702 right here. There are people that are, were looking at this as a potential five wave structure a longer five wave structure or at least retest these areas right here and you can see we do have initial sell off now if we were to get that five wave structure something like this there's our back test of wave one and this people could have easily looked at this double top in this 702 as okay we're getting ready for a five wave structure reverting back to the long term trend line uh, so I think it's very interesting that just how many bull are bear traps were inside of this because right here this is a bear trap all day but nonetheless I mean you do have a trend line that ends up holding just like that over the course of this time period and I mean it would have been hard that to judge that but once you get this kind of solidified in I mean you stay bullish on top of this trend line for most of the time so yeah that's very interesting how we get a nice double top in that 702 I see stuff like this all the time nothing new but nonetheless let's look at our full extension here we get I mean we trade sideways on top of our first extension for a long time I'm gonna pull this all the way over you see how much action we trade in right here now when we actually do get a confirmation when we do now it'd be hard to judge this at the time but you get this gap up you hold right at your first extension you have this little back test right there and then we hold 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 a couple breakouts to the downside but nonetheless it holds and now we do get a nice double top into our second extension and we meet it again for a third lower high look at that wick into that second extension you think they came out with news this just so happens to be the beginning of january 2018 you think somewhere in this double top they came out with that news on that acquisition i'd want to go look at that uh, because, you know, it could have been planned by the company that, okay, we're going to announce this acquisition and we are going to dilute shares up here. We'll get this double top into my second extension. And look at this sell-off following the 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 uh, acquisition in 2017. I mean, this the stock price definitely hammered right here. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, we have a 58% drop, which is... Is nonetheless, it's pretty common when you have a big acquisition announcement like that. Uh, but obviously, uh, we haven't looked enough into that acquisition. I don't know if they got a fair price. I don't know what type of premium they pay, but we do know that they issued some shares. They uh, issued some debt, and they cut their dividend down. And yeah, uh, and it's just crazy where the chart meets up when that 2017 acquisition transpired. So that is definitely something to keep in mind, especially th this is, this just adds to my, my point that I've been making that anytime you're dealing with acquisitions, you got to go look into them and get a better understanding because just because they're announcing an acquisition doesn't mean that they're going to have a huge sell off right here. There, there's clearly a disconnect in investors mindsets when they announce that, that acquisition and, Ultimately, we get this sell off. Where do we revert back to? We revert back to our long term trend line where we put pretty much a three higher lows onto this trend line. How is it going to transpire when we get when we come in contact with this again? 
but yeah I think that's very interesting stuff now if you are buying this trend line and you're looking for a full extension I mean this is your full extension right here it just so happens that my full extension meets up right around that 100 flat now I don't know if I have this 100% accurately set but yeah, right around that 100, this is definitely a sell window. If you end up getting that type of extension, um, I would definitely uh, be thinking about a potential sell in that area. And if I were to match up the tops of this, this is actually a pretty parallel channel. Um, I just didn't have it marked in at the time. But I mean, you could take from these tops right here and it's pretty parallel. But nonetheless, I'll take this extension out real quick. Nonetheless, if I was going to set this channel, I just think you get a lot more price action off of taking these highs. You see how we're fighting? We're fighting to get on top of that. We do get on top of it a couple times in here. But nonetheless, this is how I'd probably have my channel set right there. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if people had their channel set right here. Because you can see when we are on top of this, we, we, we are getting price action on top of that as well. And you see that right here as well. So pretty interesting right there that the top of this channel is getting price action. Especially dating all the way back to November of uh, 1990. So pretty interesting right there. There's a couple more points that I want to get across before we... Uh, close out the history of this stock now if I were to be looking at this as okay here's my double bottom here's my left leg right here we get a double bottom come in and we actually do get this extended right leg and I was looking at this in particular and calling this a neckline now the reason why I started talking about this is because when we get this 702 right here <clears throat> hope you guys can see why I'm drawing that in right there when we do get this double top into the 702 this is where we revert back to and we hold right here you see how we put this wick on top of my neckline right here well at the time this is a this is not an extended right leg I would not be putting orders in off this neckline because I want to see this push over top of my left leg this is my left leg I want to see that right leg push over top of it and then once we get on top of that, so right here we're on top of it. I'm expecting one day this is going to backtest the neckline. And if it does, I'm going to have an order there and I'm going to take advantage of this. Uh, so if I was drawing out this trade right here, <clears throat> where would I put my stop loss? I'd probably put it right in. Uh, it's, it's pretty tough to say. And this is, uh, I would probably have this neckline moved up just a little bit right there. So call it 28 flat. If I was putting a stop loss, just to make it simple for the trade, we got a $6 risk right here. So if I was buying this neckline, this is where I'd put my stop loss, and we're looking at a $6 risk reward. Um, my one-to-one -one risk reward, I'm just going to map it out real quick. There's another $6. There is another $6, give or take. And here is another $6, give or take. So you got in at, at 28, you got a $6 risk. Your 1 to 1 puts you at 34. Your 2 to 1 puts you at 40. Your 3 to 1 puts you at 46. If I go and transpot, or look back over here, you do get wicked in off this neckline. In March 23rd of 2020, and this neckline was formed 11 years ago in 2020 or 2009. Now that is that is just extraordinary right there that we end up getting this full extension. Had you bought this neckline looking for a 3 to 1 risk reward, you got it right here. I mean that you hit pretty good on this trade had you had you have this mapped out right here. I mean that's a 68% trade nonetheless and that's not saying that a couple days after that you would have you would have hit your 2 to 1 risk reward in a matter of a couple months. 40% uh, trade would have easily been able to get out. I see a lower high one two three a one two three four See how my wave four tries to get back to the bottom of wave one and then we get our wave five reverting back to my long-term trend line You could have gotten in again off this trend line and I mean there's so many different ways that you could have played this had you been buying this neckline but I think it's interesting that 11 years later, uh, you're getting price action off that. Now, let's go talk about more about this entry. So we so we know we got this, this long-term trend line. But as I stated, it'd be so hard to be able to judge that third point of contact. Because we got one, two, three. How am I going to be able to judge? It just so happens that that's my neckline. Well, there's more information that goes into it as well. Because you also have this downtrend right here. You see how we... You have one, two, three. You see how we put this double top? And remember, this is a weekly. You see this double top right here that we put? This is definitely a downtrend, 100%, because you get this the next point of contact right here directly correlating with it. Now, you do get on top of it, and see how it's holding above that downtrend? And then we get bullish. 
we'll look at where we come in contact with this again, right at our neckline, where we are determining our long-term trend line. So let's say in a scenario, uh, you weren't able to identify this long-term trend line. Well, you definitely should have had this downtrend in right there. No question about that. And you get this nice little pop. You're waiting for this neckline. On this initial drop, you missed out on your neckline, let's say. Let's say you missed this opportunity right here and it runs and you're like, man, I should have, I should have really just bought some anyways. Well, you ended up getting rewarded on this neckline and a back test of the top of this downtrend. Look at that entry right there. You want to talk about a world class entry. It was right there. And you hit on your three to one risk reward, which is a 68% trade. I mean, that's, that's damn impressive right there, if you ask me. But uh, nonetheless, those were the points that I wanted to get across in this video. I know it's uh, pushing a little bit longer. We're sitting around 15 minutes. But uh, really good information going over on the chart. And we are going to make another charting video where we focus more on this time frame. I just had too much information I wanted to get across. And more in particular, we are going to be matching up. I don't know why it just changed on me. Uh, pretty interesting that it changed in the middle of my video like that. But nonetheless, we are going to match up the valuations that we marked for the company in the third video to the chart. And we're going to focus more on the short term for the next video. So if you're interested, if you liked everything that you see in this video, you're going to want to make sure you see the next one. Because we're going to talk about potentially starting a position, how I'm possibly could go about looking at something like that and we did have an uptrend right in here I'm not going to go back to the beginning but you do have a nice uptrend in here and we're getting close to that so uh, I'm going to talk about all that stuff in the next video hope you guys like the content see you on the next one